Hi, I'm Shana Galen and this is Luna. Um, and over the next few weeks, I'll be posting videos about my upcoming release, No Earls Allowed. I'll show you the cover for that because I don't have actual one uh, cover yet. And that comes out March 6th in print and digital. So a little bit about No Earls Allowed. It's the story of former soldier Neil Roxall, who was the leader of a group of soldiers sent to Europe to defeat Napoleon. It was a suicide troop made up of the best, the brightest, and most importantly, the expendable. Of the 30 men in the troop, only 12 have survived, and Neil, who is the bastard son of a Marquess, experiences a lot of survivor's guilt because he survived while his brother, who is a legitimate son, was killed. So when Neil's father asks Neil for a favor, which is to persuade the daughter of a friend to abandon her charitable work at an orphanage and return home, Neil agrees. And that's when he meets Lady Juliana and her 12 orphans, not to mention their pet rats and any number of other unsavory types. And it turns out Julia isn't so eager to leave and she's in a lot of trouble as well. A great deal of the book takes place in an orphanage in Spitalfields and I will talk more about Spitalfields in another video. My fictional orphanage only takes in boys um, and the orphanage is rough and it's run down, but it's certainly a lot better than real than the real orphanages it was modeled after. So a little bit about orphans. Formal adoption of children as we know it didn't exist in England until the 1920s. And prior to that, orphans and an orphan was actually could be a child who was without parents, but it could also be a child who's forced out of a family because the family is too large and doesn't have room for the child. And at that time, orphans could be taken in by um, friends or neighbors. And these children were usually put to work. Now, if nobody could take the child and the child was not under the protection of a guardian or a ward, then he or she would become the responsibility of the parish. And the, the parish, if it was a somewhat wealthy parish, um, might apprentice the child out. But once their funds ran out or if they weren't a wealthy parish, more than likely the child would be sent to an orphanage. Now these orphanages were so bad that many of the children preferred to run away or to turn to a life of crime rather than live in the orphanage. The conditions were unsanitary, the caretakers were indifferent at best, and they were abusive at worst. The children did not have enough to eat, they often received little to no education, uh, they froze in winter, they baked in summer. You can think back to high school and your reading of Dickens's Oliver Twist. And although Charles Dickens was a Victorian writer, he grew up in the Regency period and he exposed orphanages for the awful places they truly were. When Oliver, who is starving, as all the boys are in the book, draws the short straw and he must ask the head of the orphanage for more, he's punished severely and for days. And no wonder he would rather risk his life on the outside than, than remain in the orphanage. And no wonder, my heroine is determined to help the boys under her care at the orphanage. And I have to say that the orphans in the book have become some of my favorite characters that I've ever written. So, I was wondering, do you have a favorite fictional orphan? Maybe it's the orphan Annie, or Oliver Twist, or the little girl in the secret garden. I can't remember her name at the moment. If so, put it in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'll see you next week with another video.